Welcome, everybody, back for another episode of Inside the Stadium Podcast. I am Cameron with Eliza. And we are going to be diving into a little bit more MLB this time around, uh, starting with some free agency and training signings or trade signings, stuff like that. Uh, one of the major ones was kind of an extension. Yeah. Uh, Edwin Diaz to the Mets, five years, 102. Yeah, that was, uh, they overpay him. I think that's $25 million maybe a year. Roughly around there, yeah, a little bit more. They overpay him. And this is the, the problem. That's like affecting for future um, bullpen relievers or closer. I I understand how the Mets are, you know, but overpaying pl- players like that, yeah, yeah. Well, so we'll see what we'll we'll see what happens with that. I mean, it, you could see a Josh Hader type of deal too, where you trade him away after two years, and maybe get a couple couple picks, maybe a couple prospects. But we'll see. So we're gonna run down a couple more here real quick. Uh, you could tell me quick thoughts on it. Uh, one of which is going to be Clayton Kershaw back to the Dodgers, one year, twenty million. Um, yeah, yeah, he will retire. Retires a Dodger, so hundred percent he will. Uh, Jock Peterson's back to the Giants on a qualifying mm-hmm. offer. Uh, you got Tyler Anderson going from the Dodgers to the Angels. It's a short drive down the highway. Uh, that's three years, thirty nine million. So the Angels finally get some uh pitching help, which is much needed. Yeah, but the Angels have a lot, a lot of things to fix. Um. Otani is going to leave. Possibly. Possibly. I think he's leaving, man. We're going to be looking into that, and I think that's one reason why they are going to be ranked where they are when we do our predictions here in just a few minutes. Um, Mariners. Hmm. uh, Teoscar Hernandez. Oh, my God. That trade, I didn't see it coming. Neither did I. After the Blue Jays got eliminated by Seattle. I remember going on Twitter as soon as that happened, and just Blue Jays fans were in complete, complete like they were distraught over it it was ridiculous um massive signing for the world champions and that's jose abreu who's going to be taking over first place yeah there will be a first baseman and they got better yes they did and that that's that's scary for that division that's why competition wise we'll see what our rankings are but i um, about texas rangers you know uh, that is a possibility um they they have uh they might shock me but i i still don't know if they're ready yet um, Verlander to the Mets. That's kind of that replacement of Jacob Degrom, if you can even replace Jacob Degrom. I mean, when Jacob Degrom's healthy, Jacob Degrom is that pitcher. But but Verlander is also a multiple time Cy Young winner, so we'll see what happens there. Well, he's older. They are both getting older. Yes. And the thing is, like, I know the Mets, um, you know, want to substitute De- Degrom, but Verlander is good, but he's forty. Yeah. And they overpay him forty three million dollars a year. So then here comes your team in here with uh, Anthony Rizzo. Three years, about $40 million. They do have a – I think it's the third year. It's a $6 million option. I don't know if that's team or player. No, but either it's, way, uh, it's cheap. Well, the second year is a player option. Okay, that's And the third year is a, a club option. Okay, so third year's club for six. They're probably going to end up taking that. Um, Rizzo's not leaving the Yankees. I think he's retiring after those contracts up, but we'll see. Um, Trey Turner, massive deal. <laughs> Phillies, 11-year, $300 million. Ah, they over – um. It was not overpay. He no. He has his speed, his hitting, his defense. I don't I, think, I think it's, it's overpay, but they need the, a shortstop. They yeah. Phillies, they need a shortstop, and they got it. Yeah. So they we'll we'll see what happens with it. I mean, it's definitely going to be very interesting. Um, I think the years kind of help out balance that. Just kind of like the Harper thirteen three thirty. I think mm. it was. So kind of helps that year to year year to year basis. Yeah. Um, Josh Bell to Cleveland. Cleveland didn't do much in free yeah, agency. I you did predict that. I'll give you that. I'll give you I that. Predict, I predict a lot of players in the. Yeah, yeah. You we we have that conversation all the time. But I will say that with Josh Bell going to Cleveland, it does help a much needed role switch hitting uh, power guy who can also hit for contact. Um, Cleveland needed a right handed power guy, and he kind of fits right and left. So we'll see what yeah, happens. The offense, especially you know, with yeah. the, the offense is is Ho- good. Hopefully he produces because Cleveland is cold in the the first couple months of the season near the end as well. So we'll see his, yeah, his coming from San Diego to yeah he did play in Washington though. Oh prior, yeah, yeah, I forgot so that about does that, help. Yeah. Um. Oh, you want to talk about overpaid? Here's your overpaid player, Cody Bellinger, Cubs, one year, seventeen and a half million for a guy who literally just got cut by the Dodgers for no for not even producing. The I last don't two think years. they'll overpay because ah, uh, seventeen and a half for a guy who barely hit over. I see Cody Bellinger get. He will be the most um how you how you call that the uh, 
most comeback, improved. most comeback yeah. player. I I think Bellinger would do a lot of things in the Cubs. I think so. Okay. So we obviously talked about Teoscar Hernandez getting traded to the Mariners. That has a lot to do with the Giants getting Mitch Haniger on mm-hmm. a three-year, forty-three and a half million dollar deal. Um, kind of like what we joked about earlier. Him and Arson Judge would have been a great combo. Um, again, think? shout out John Heyman for that one. Oh no, uh, Asron Judge. Asron, remember that? Yeah, Ar- John Ar- Heyman. Yeah. Asron. Yeah, that was Arson. I'm sorry, Ar- yeah, Arson, 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 Arson Judge. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know you really didn't have a uh, big uh, view on him when he was with the Yankees and didn't produce, but him getting traded to the Cardinals was a big boost in his pickup of his ERA and his pitching. That's Jamison Tyone to mm-hmm. the Cubs for four years, $68 million. So him pitching with the Cardinals definitely got him that contract. He definitely pitched a lot better once he left the Yankees. I have no idea if that has to do with the stadium, no, the talking, fans. Just, just Jordan Montgomery. Uh, Jamison Tyone was in the Yankees Who, all the time. He was with the Yankees all the time? Yeah. Oh, Jordan, that was Jordan Montgomery. Montgomery is I thought you traded Tyone. No, or it Tyone. was Montgomery. Okay. Well, that's my bad on that one. I got that one wrong. Yeah. but. He did pretty well for you guys, didn't he? For the most part, um, he did. He, sub three. He, he, he was better than last year. Yeah, was he a sub the year three? Before, I'm sorry, sub three ERA type guy. Yeah, yeah. Like three and a half, three, three and three at and the a beginning quarter. of the season, he struggled a little bit. But but you know, no, no, I'm sorry, I will get that back. He was doing good from the season. Then after that, but hey, he's a decent uh, pitcher. Um, I'm happy for his contract. He's very good pitcher. He's going to the Cubs, and I think this. To be honest, they improved the starting pitcher, uh, the Cubs uh, rotation. Yeah, I just don't know if that offense is there. We're gonna have to figure that out here. Um, they got some young guys. We'll see what we'll see what they do. Um, then going back to your team, obviously you're very happy about this, but I do have one question to follow up with it. So first off, Aaron Judge back to the Yankees, nine years, three hundred sixty million. Um, but my question is. You got the number one prospect in baseball in the next couple of years, possibly the what they're calling the next Mike Trout, and that is Jason Dominguez. Uh, there's no room for him right now, and I think he's about a year away. So my question is, where are they going to put him? What are they going to do? Because you have Stanton's contract, you have Judge's contract. Uh, I mean, Stanton's a DH. He sometimes plays outfield. You got Bader for another year. I, I just I feel like there's just um, nowhere for him. I I have no clue. I don't know what the Yankees are doing with the left field position. Maybe that's the reason why they want to keep it that open because of him. Maybe Fair possibly. Enough. Um, but you cannot move Aaron Hicks. Who's gonna take Aaron Hicks' contract? Nobody. And that's you have to eat that contract. And Harrison Bader will be a free agent. Um, in 2024. Well, 2000. You know, at the end of the season. Correct. Um. But honestly, you got Aaron Judge in there. That's the right field. You got Giancarlo Stanton as well. I think they will keep the left field open. Maybe that's the reason why they don't want to make a big, you know, they talk about the rumors about Mark Reynolds from the Pirates coming to New York. He wants to be in New York. But, hey, Pirates asking for too much. Um, I think Jason Dominguez will stay in New York because of the fact they need a left field. So there's a possibility he will stay, but the problem is there's there's some prospects in the in the system right now. You need a shortstop. Yankees need a shortstop. You got Volpe, is the best shortstop in the prospects right now in the MLB. See you. You see, I, I and Peraza as well. And that's where I was gonna go with that. I think your best shortstop is gonna be Oswald Peraza. I know Anthony Volpe is very high on that radar, but I think Peraza is the guy that mm-hmm. should be taking over that position. Well, you're gonna put Cabrera. That's the other thing, Cabrera. Cabrera. Uh, that's another option. Um, you know, he's Oswaldo Cabrera. He's the utility guy. He's like a DJ LeMahieu kind of. So there's the what's, what are you gonna do with Glaber Torres? That, that 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 that's 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 a lot of things you have to move in that road in that. Lineup. Well, we're going to see what happens with it. Obviously, spring training is right around the corner. Pitchers and catchers are going to report, and then we're going to go into it. About two weeks, yeah. So, um, 
maybe there's some cuts, maybe there's some trades. We don't know. We're just gonna have to wait and see, and eventually we'll be able to break down these rosters. But well, I, there's I agree too with many you things. Jason Dominguez, what are they gonna do with Jason Dominguez? If team? he's not up with you guys in two years, you need to trade him because he's not gonna be able to to withstand multiple of years. He's already twenty. He'll be twenty two. I mean, he's ready to go. Is almost. Mo- what do you call? They compare to my trout kind of. He's in double A. I mean, he's well, almost he's a ready switch to go. hitter too. Yeah. And he hits for power. I mean, he hit one at the All-Star game in Dodger Stadium, the Futures game. He mm-hmm. crushed one out of the stadium, and that's why they gave him the nickname The Martian because he, he's out of this him. world. That's what they say. They will keep Peraza. That's what I heard. They will keep Volpe. My question is, okay, so you will keep Peraza and Volpe. So you got DJ LeMahieu in for four years, maybe, three, four, three years, something like that. Then you got Cabrera. He's came up from the farm system in the middle of the season. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. We're gonna get into that more and more with the with the with spring the trade, training. Yeah. I mean, there, yeah, there's gonna be trades. There's gonna be moving around. You never know. I mean, yeah, there's people in the farm system. Cleveland is one of those teams that, if they like a guy and there's people crowding him, they're gonna trade to try to figure another position out. Mm-hmm. They've done it too many times. They've done it so many times. So, Yankees could do something similar. Um. Continuing on this though, we do have Wilson Contreras of the Cardinals. Excuse me, mm-hmm. five years, uh, eighty-seven move. and a half million that replaces Yadier Molina. That's a good uh, move. And, and and when I say replace, I mean fills the void that they needed. Nobody can replace Mon- Yadier Molina. No, nobody. Nobody. Um, Xander Bogarts to the Padres, eleven years, two eighty. <laughs> uh, similar to a Trey Turner deal, but definitely helps the Padres. And helps waiting the Padres. until Tatis comes back, who could potentially play DH or outfield. Man, that that team is gonna be scary. Uh, it's gonna be scary, uh, but there's gonna be a lot of competition with the Dodgers and uh, it's just the West in general. I feel well, like it's right now San Diego and Dodgers only because I don't see you're San take, Francisco. You're taking the Giants out of it completely, huh? Well, come on. I mean, what? The, how many? What were they back? What were they back? How many were they back? They back. Uh, it wasn't a third, third uh, in the league, in the division. Okay, so Padres were twenty two back and the Giants were thirty back. I mean I mean you never know. They did add Match Hanniger, they did add some other guys. We'll have to wait and see. Um But they don't have a they need a catcher, correct? No, no. No, they good. have Joey Barton, they do have another guy coming up as okay. well. Um so I mean they they did make some moves. They did, we'll have to wait and see. Um continuing off of that though, we do have Sean Murphy traded to the Braves. I know you said he was going to Cleveland. I uh once I seen the rumor of what they wanted and I don't know if it's 100% true, uh giving up your top 2 or one of your top 2 pitching prospects, if not your top pitching prospect in that deal. Yeah, no thank you. I'll yeah. I'll pass. But you see what the trade was? It was a three three team trade. The yep. Brewers, uh Oakland yep. and Atlanta. And that's and that's Cleveland's done one of those before and that was to get um Obviously, Trevor Bauer out of Cleveland. Um, Cleveland knows the right time to deal, and that is clearly the case with Trevor Bauer and Mike Clevenger, however you feel about that situation. But we're not going to touch that subject anymore. No. Um, He's m- not going to sign any. I don't think he will. He's only eligible to get a veteran minimum of seven yeah, and a half mil. Mo- so. money that he has, but yeah. Um, Carlos Rodon, back to the uh, – Goes or not back, excuse me, to the Yankees for six years, 162. Great, great move. Um, kind of why I hinted at the payroll comment last week when you wanted to talk payroll a little bit, but we're not going to go that far into it. The payroll is right there, $288.5 million right now. And how much is that over luxury? Uh, this is a third. It's uh, um, it was 235. So you're about? almost 50, 60 million over luxury. Yeah, but it. it they avoid the the last one. They want to avoid that, and they did that. So they are like five millions under two hundred ninety three. Yeah, and there's only two teams ahead of them, and I believe it's the Dodgers Mets, and Mets. The Mets only, right? Oh, the Mets only. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to the MLB Player Association, Max Scherzer. We want competition, but we have teams that can spend like it's nobody's business. And well, this is you have to blame uh, as well as the owner of the uh, Mets. Yeah, it's, and it's I said the MLB. Same thing, it's the, the MLB. Yankees too. I'm a Yankees fan. We needed a salary but, cap long ago. But I think it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen now. And but I think the uh, but. they need to maybe increase the the tax penalty somehow. Maybe try to balance everything. Maybe, maybe they try to lower that 235 to maybe 220. Maybe. Yeah, but it's not going to stop those but teams not. from spending. But uh, I think in the problem, this is what's going to happen to the Mets. 
you see all the penalties they will get. They they will lose how many picks if they have, go for the uh, the last uh, threshold or the, uh, the, the sh- I have not seen anything about that. They say there's a lot of penalties and also they lose international pool uh, money. I thought it was they would lose first round draft picks and international signing bonuses if they signed somebody who was a qualifying and offer. In, you know, and also including the when they go above the 293. So if he continues yeah, doing that, yeah. But again, that those. I mean, you have Pete Alonso, Lindor, Verlander, Scherzer. I mean, do you really think they care? No, I don't. But if he continues doing that, you know, all the Mets fan, they're, they're not going to run out of money. No, they're, I'm not saying they're going to run out of money. I'm just saying they have no choice to make a trade to at least uh, work at the farm system because of the fact is you will lose some picks. You know, the uh, years to come. Again, picks in baseball. How many rounds are there in the MLB draft? A lot. I mean, over 50. You think they really care about pay- You can draft somebody well, first. Or international f- pool of money. You too. can you draft I mean? somebody first overall, first pick, and they cannot pan out in baseball. It's not like the NFL. It's not like the MLB where they're almost a guarantee. I'm sorry, not MLB. NBA where they're almost a guarantee. You know, MLB is totally different. You never know. Um perfect example of that is Cleveland had a player Bradley Zimmer first round never panned out to be that player that was a wasted draft pick yeah but that's what happens in baseball it happens in baseball um finishing this list off here we do have Andrew Benintendi uh going to the White Sox five years 75 million so he that's a good move to stay in New York he no he did not he, he does not play well in there whatsoever so and especially coming from Boston and you see the money he will get on the Chicago yeah, seventy five million. Exactly. That he, and that's why I'm a little skeptical on this AL Central, which we're gonna get into. Uh Nathan Avaldi to Texas. He's gonna go join the Rangers with uh Jacob DeGrom. Uh so two years thirty four million. Good good move. That's a good second backup guy to DeGrom. Uh the Rangers don't have bad pitching either, but No, they they have a good pitching. If they still healthy. Let's see about that, yeah. That's going to be the ultimate question. Uh, three more here to go. Rafael Devers extension, 11 years, $331 million. Coming from, I'm not signing if you don't sign Bogarts, and then turns around and signs. They overpay him. And that's what you have to do to keep they players were, like they that. Pay, they overpay him, and then the, the agent said, you know what? We stick to it. And what the Red Sox are, I, I don't, you see all the trade they're doing? They also signed Kluber for... Ten year, uh, ten million dollar for one year. I, they're gonna run out these pitching contracts. They're gonna just fill gaps while they can. Their farm system's gonna keep getting better over the years. There's not much they're gonna do in the next, I say, two years. Give in it the next five. Years. I'd say four, three to five, and then they're gonna start picking it up. They, they don't have a good farm system. They're they're like I think top fifteen, but they're not. They're not there yet, and that comes from trading Ben uh, Ben Attendee. You know, obviously they lose an outfielder and J.D. Martinez to the Dodgers, so that's a one-year deal. You trade that in the middle of the season. Sometimes you just can't find a trade, though. There's a reason. But, you know, like, they say, hey, we're going to rebuild. You know, you cannot compete, but they just want to try to compete. The problem is I didn't think they want to fully rebuild either. You know, they did have Xander Bogarts. Maybe they did think they were going to keep him, and that's why they didn't trade him. The Cubs did it. Remember the Cubs? Yeah, but look at what the Cubs are doing now. But yeah, that's, that's but but their but, but their farm system is a lot better than Boston's. That's the exactly reason why they did it because they said, you know what, let's 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 do the rebuild. There's no way Boston fans will crucify them if they do not have a t- quick turnaround, and that's why they're waning. That's why they're trying to keep stars there, and they're going to see what happens. But well, you see that uh, story, he's out for the whole year. He's could be. out. For, I don't think he's out for the whole year. I think but he's out for a little be, bit. But it could be out for the whole year. Yeah, but we can play the could be, should be game all day long. It's, it's We're going to have to wait and see for the actual news on that. Um, Carlos Correa back to the Twins uh, <laughs> after multiple multiple switching of teams and signings That's and failing coaster. and physicals. He's back with the Twins for six years, $200 million. Good price. Not over, not over overpay for Correa. My question is. About Carlos Correa situation. Yeah. By the you way, know, I said two seventy five. He hit last year. It was two uh, two ninety two or two ninety eight. Yeah. So I was a little off on that. So Carlos Correa reports going to the Giants. Um, the physical two hours before press conference, yep. San Francisco cancel the meeting. They seen something they didn't like. Okay, I yeah. I understand. I I disagree in that moment because he wasn't. 
Then the Mets jumping in. Steve Cohen was in Hawaii. Vacation. I will sign you up. So they the Mets hire the same doctor that San Francisco did the physical therapy with Carlos Correa. And he did the failing again. Yeah. So what is the purpose? Why the Mets was doing that? Maybe you, to see if it was just a false physical. Maybe it, maybe it was just man. a pending. I don't. I mean, I don't know. Nobody come knows. Come on, man. The same doctor. I mean, why? I do. You, you go to the same doctor every time, right? If you but, fail physical, you're come on, retake man. But the same, same team just hired the same doctor. I mean, that's that's. But maybe that's who they think is the best doctor. Well, out I think there. the Mets will be criticized for this. And let me tell you something. They can get fined because Steve Cohen went to Twitter and said this. This was the last piece in the puzzle. Okay. Was it before or after the signing, though? No, it was the rumor report that he signed with the Mets. Okay, so maybe it wasn't broken but yet. But it was but not maybe, official. But maybe it was. The problem is, is the and time. That's of, the, the uh, lockdown. Remember the lockdown? Yes. That was one of the things that you cannot able to do. He wasn't. He wasn't. You can still put out comments like that. You can't actively talk with them and try to get them to influence them to come over unless you are actually talking to their agent, which maybe Cohen was. We don't know. The time of when he sent it might not have been official yet, but it might have just getting ready to be official. I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Again, like I said, they have money. They're, they don't care. They're going for a championship. They fell short last year. Big time. By a lot. By a lot. Um, Last thing is Marlins trading Pablo Lopez. That is their second best pitcher buying Sandy Alcatara. Uh, Pablo Lopez to and two prospects to the Twins yeah, that for Luis Arise. I originally seen it was just a straight up trade. Then I seen the two prospects and they got a top five prospect and out of it. The top, uh, number and, and, a, and a guy who is in the top, I think, 50. five or something. Yeah, well, well he was own, number five. Team. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. and then the other one was like top fifty in MLB or in top seventy five in MLB or something like that. So Twins won that trade. And that's why it's going to be a very good division this year, I think, in the AL Central. Um, so we covered all of the trainings and signings. Those are the major ones. Obviously, there's a lot more we're not going to get into, like G-Man Choi to the Pirates. But um, going into MLB predictions, I think you have your list and I have mine. Um, we're going to kick it off with uh, the NL Central. Um, why don't you give me your five uh, for the NL Central? Um, I can tell you right now. I will say, of course, St. Louis. Okay. Will be Milwaukee second. I will say Chicago Cubs third. Uh, Pirates four. And Reds fifth. Okay, so we don't have any differences there. I have the exact same thing you do for that. I don't think that there was enough made. Uh, the Cardinals obviously got better. Brewers got better with a trade for Abraham Toro and uh, Jesse Winker as they sent Jesse away Winker, Kel- yeah. Kelton Wong. So they did get better, just not better to mm-hmm. better better enough to beat the Cardinals. Um, go on uh, NL East now. Um, so I will read this one off for me. I have the Mets uh, taking first, Braves taking second. The only reason I have the Braves over the Phillies, who are ranked third for me, is because of, like uh, we were discussing earlier, Bryce Harper being out for at least the beginning of the season. We don't know how many months. It sounds like at least two or three, possibly. Um, And then I have Marlins fourth and Nationals fifth. Not much of a change there um, in that division. I I do think that the Mets are going to be able to push through and win the title this time. I I I put the Atlanta first. Okay, so you kept the Braves first like last year. Okay. Yeah, because they, they improved with the Sean Murphy trade. They did, but I just he's don't know catcher. if he, he is. He's a good defensive catcher. So was Trevor Travis uh, Darno, but he does add that offense. My biggest question is, does the Braves pitching staff hold up? Okay. That's been a big issue for them last well, two years. Well, remember, because the Mets have some issues with Max Scherzer last year. They do, but Verlander is there now. So and Ver, and even though we said he's forty years old, how how often is Verlander out in a season? Well, only that Tommy John surgery that he had last year, right? Uh, or two yeah, end of twenty twenty one. Yeah. So I mean, he but he came back this year and won a Cy Young. So, mm-hmm. so we'll see. Um, but you have Braves one. Who do you have two? I got the Mets. Uh, well, Braves first. I got the Mets second. Phillies third. Third. 
and barely. I was deciding between those those three teams got improved. They improve. They did, but again, the Phillies lose Harper, so that's something that you got to keep. Yeah, an eye you're on. right. I forget about that. But, but they you got do. Trey Turner. They do have Trey Turner, and again, that speed kills in baseball. Definitely does. But okay, so you have Braves, you have Mets, you have Phillies. Who are your last two rounding out? Um, uh, Miami. Okay. And Washington Nationals. Okay, so we have the same uh, kind of there. Just one and two is a little different. Uh, interesting one, and this is going to be one that we just talked about a little bit. But No West. Hmm. Go ahead for that one. You can go ahead and start that one off. San Diego Padres first. You have the Padres first. I got okay. the Padres first. I got the Dodgers second. San Francisco third. Colorado four. Arizona fifth. Okay, so we have almost the exact same. I have Padres one. I have Dodgers two, Giants three. But I have the Diamondbacks over the Rockies. Wow. Um. Diamondbacks did tra- trade away uh, Dalton Varsho, but they did add Guriel and catcher Gabriel Mon- 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 yeah, was a Montero, I think it was. Yeah, it was he did come up uh, for the Blue Jays. He uh, did come up for the Blue Jays last year, and he mm-hmm. did really well, but the Blue Jays were able to trade him because they do have Alejandro Kirk, and, and they he, do have uh, that second. I forgot the second catcher's name. Yeah, I forgot his name. But uh, he, he did pretty well himself yeah. last year. So, uh. You kind of gave us a spoiler, so I'll let you take this one as well. AL Central, go ahead. I will say Cleveland. This is for you. First place. First place. Minnesota, second. Chicago White Sox, third. Detroit, four. Kansas City, fifth. Okay, we are a little way off, <laughs> me and you, on that one. Um, <laughs> As much as I like Cleveland and how they won last year, they were really scrappy. Didn't really improve the bullpen. Didn't really improve anything they other than Josh Bell. Dot even and they have a good bullpen, but you still need to keep advancing. You can't just keep sitting steady. You can't keep sitting steady. As much as I love the team, it's my favorite team. Just like you're a Yankee fan, um, I have the White Sox one. Wow, Ben Intendi's there now. On top of with that pitching, with that pitching, the, the White pitching, Sox really. Dylan huh. Dylan Cease, good pitcher, right? Giolito, good G- pitcher. Giolito is not. I, I mean, he's a two guy. Dylan Cease is your guy. Um, but uh, come the, on, they don't have a bullpen. Check out White Sox. They, they did lose Liam Hendricks, and uh, hopefully, first off, prayers to Liam Hendricks. He got diagnosed with Damn, cancer. How White Sox first? Yeah. Well, did you not just hear what I said? Liam Hendricks is going to be out. I he, know, but he, uh, prayers to him for because he has cancer. So I know. We'll, we'll, we'll hope he prayers gets for. Him. Let's hope he comes back. Um, but I do think White Sox again. The pitching is. There's a couple holes there. However, the offense. You you did lose Jose Abreu. Abreu. You did lose Abreu. You still have Tim Anderson. You still have Eloy Jimenez, who's coming back from injury. Yeah, they somebody who they injuries. somebody who they missed last year, who was Luis Roberts. Yeah, he's coming back, and now you have Ben Intendi. Not including that, you have Vaughn, a prospect coming up who can play in the infield. I believe. Um, they still have Yasmani Grandal. They do have Gavin Sheets who can play defense uh, and play DH. So so we'll see there. I do have the White Sox one. I have Cleveland two. Um, Minnesota three. Now, with the prospects coming up and how the deterioration of the team for the other team and the pitching is depleting for them as well, I put the Royals four, Tigers five. Bobby Wood Jr. is ready to push that team forward. Mm. I do think, and they are going to be getting Chapman as a closer for the Royals. Correct. So, <laughs> so I do think the Royals are going to finally take a step out of last place. Not very far out of last place, but they're going to take a step out of last place. I think the Tigers with Miguel's last season, mm-hmm. Miguel Cabrera uh, is going to play a little bit more. They, they, they're pitching. They're pitching in Detroit is just god awful. I, I don't think they have many other good pitchers other than maybe Matthew Boyd, and even he's questionable at times. Um, but going into the AL East, uh, I got your Yankees number one. Okay. I do have your uh, the Blue Jays number two. You might think I'm a little crazy for this one, but uh, I do have the Orioles three. Uh, they have a couple good prospects coming up, and I, I'm excited, especially Gunnar Henderson. And uh, now you get a full season of Adley Rutschman, who's going to be a stud, I think, in this league, on top of how good that center field is with uh, – Cedric Mullins, you have Austin Hayes, uh, some pitching as well coming up. So, um, 
I put Tampa Bay four, and I put Boston five. How's yours rounding out? Um, Yankees, of course. Okay. We have first. Toronto, second. I put Baltimore, third. So we're accurate on that. Boston, four. Okay. Tampa Bay, fifth. For as much as you, uh, I don't want to say you, you kind of shit on Boston, but you do kind of, there, we do talk a lot about how they have not gotten better. They keep signing older pitchers who either get hurt or just they're wasting money. But for you to put Boston four, that actually kind of surprised me. Um, the thing is because of the, you know, all the signing they did, you know, not a good signing, but at least something more improvable than last year. Yeah. And Tampa Bay. They really didn't do much. They course, did they, sign they Yanni Diaz. I did see that like two yeah, days ago. Yeah, extension, but they don't. Try to improve the starting pitch. Only Mac Mac I only? did see a stat. I forgot exactly what it was in. I think it was um, it had something. It was something to do with like contact or something to do with like um, exit velocity or some sort like that. Mm-hmm. Something that's really important with batting. I'll have to find the the tweet again. Um, see if I can find Boy, it, it here. It, but it, it, I will be. It will be surprise us if Tampa Bay will surprise all of us like always because we put Tampa Bay. You know, back in the years, you know, like, not good. But they surprise us every single time. So, we'll see. But I put Tampa Bay fifth. And the reason was because of oh, injuries. and here it is. So, Yanni Diaz had a 143 OPS plus last year, which ranked him 13th amongst all MLB hitters with at least 500 plate appearances. So, that's at least playing more than half the season, okay. obviously. He was 13th. You want to take a guess at who number 12 was? Shohei Otani. Yanni Diaz is very underrated. So is he the guy that they're going to try to build around on the most part? Kind of like Maybe. Evan Longoria? Maybe. We'll have to wait and see. Maybe. But I do I do think that's very interesting. You put Boston above the race. Um, AL West. Uh, I put Astros one. Of course. They're, they're the defending champions. They got better. There's nothing that they can't do right now unless of injuries happen, which obviously nobody wants to wish it upon a team. Um. Two, I did put the Mariners. Julio Rodriguez is going to continue to be good. Um, they did lose Mitch Haniger, but they do add Teoscar Hernandez. Uh, I, and Haniger does have injury issues. Um, so with that being said, I do think they got healthier in the outfield. So we'll see. Um, I did put the Rangers three. Young prospects. They finally have two years up here. Most of them. Their pitching is pretty good for three, four, five. Not great. But now you have aces of the Grom and Nivaldi. So that pitching might be able to carry them. They do have a really good bullpen, too. It's a very underrated bullpen. Um, Angels, four, and an Oakland, five. Uh, I need to see more out of the Angels before I can rank them high again. Mike Trout can't stay healthy. Shohei is doing everything he can. They did add some pitching to help him and Tyler Anderson. How much is that going to help him? We'll have to wait and see. Um... They just they have so many holes. They have so many things they need to fix. But who do you have rotten out that one? You'll be surprised. You will say no way. I put Seattle first. Okay. I put Houston. over Houston. Yeah. Okay. Because of the Bull how take. you call that championship hangover. Did that really stop them though? Look at the last whoa, three years. Whoa, whoa. That's the reason. You see all the teams they have in the same scenario. Um, remember Seattle improved. From last year. Correct. They improve. Um, right now with the Texas Rangers playing too much with against Houston. And that goes for all the teams, you know. But Seattle, they have a big motivation, especially Julio Rodriguez. Correct. Um, this team is scary, Seattle. And they can go for vengeance against Houston. I just think they're one or two pitchers away before they can actually start but, competing. But I can see where you're going with it. They, they, they're close. They, they lost they're close. Verlander. Houston lost Verlander. And hear me out. They do still have three great pitchers. They hear so. me out. Go for it. Okay. Verlander was the captain, you know, like kind of for them, like the mentor. Right now, they're they're still rookies. They're good. Don't get me wrong. Well, this is good. Garcia they're they're is good. young. I wouldn't say they're and, rookies. But I'm saying they will be a some, you know, championship hangover in this team. Okay. That could collapse. Remember, Yankees looking for vengeance as well. They will play, you know, not play for several times, but there's a lot of teams. They will play, each team will play 
at I least each other at, one, teams, at least know? one time. They're at least going to play one and time. And then Seattle, they have that motivation for them. I see to get okay. the first place. All right, so you have so you have Seattle one. Who do you have two? Uh, so yeah, one, two, and uh, you know, Astros two. And okay, Texas Rangers third because you know they are good, but I don't. I, it's 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 hard for those. So I'm gonna teams. assume you have the Angels and A's rounding out the bottom. Yes. Yeah. The Angels. So and we're A's. we're pretty much the same there, just one and two switch. So yeah. But. Overall, we'll see what happens. Uh, we do try to keep track of who is most correctly there. Um, so we'll we'll obviously circle back with that at the end of the season. Um, well, Yankees. Hopefully, Cleveland can <laughs> surprise me again. I I just think that they Cleveland are they're they're a very good. underrated team. They Cleveland are. is very very good. I just hope they bring up George Valera and Brian Rocio. Now the question is, if you bring up Brian Rocio, and they had the second best bullpen in the playoffs. They did, but if but going back, if you do bring up Brian Rocio, though, the only issue is you probably have to trade away. Um. Uh. Ahmed Rosario. Yeah. And that means Jimenez is going to short, and that means Rosh- Rocio will I play second. Jimenez will, will Jimenez, win, if he will breaks out, luggage next if year. he breaks out this year, it's almost going to be kind of like Francisco Lindor-esque. And if you look at their defensive stats last year, they're, they're pretty similar in ranking. They were they were, like they were they were pretty much tied. Well, he improved a lot. Cleveland might you have. Remember, you, you, you never used to like him too much. I the problem was he was still young, and I, and I do I do regret not giving him more time on that. But the biggest issue I seen was the swinging and the missing. And what do we see in the postseason? Huh. He just swung at everything. Yeah, but and maybe hopefully the, this the, year the anxiety to be in a playoff. Well, now he's got the experience, and that's fine. He's got the experience now. He got one year under his belt. Let's see what happens. I do think that he is very close, though. Do you think the Yankees will play against Cleveland again in the playoffs or no? I think one of those teams is going to be eliminated before they face each other, in my opinion. Maybe a first round or no? I think there's going to be somebody who gets eliminated. Not saying they're going to face each other in the first round. I'm saying, like, Cleveland might get bounced first round. Yankees, Yankees might get bounced first round. Something was something's going to happen. Against Houston or no? I don't think they improved at all. No, they stayed the either. same. Me they either. said the only thing that they did was they had Carlos Rodon, but yeah. the pitching wasn't your issue no, for the, the most part. It, it was it your offense. It wasn't the pitching. It was their freaking offense. It, you're a you're a you're. A, they call them the Bronx Bombers for a reason. You're a home run or nothing team. Until you can show me contact, there's nothing different. And that what the Astros did for the whole year. They have everything. They have balance. They have speed. They have. You know, every contact hitters, they don't strike out too much. And even Cleveland uh, Indians, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Cleveland Indians. I would say Cleveland Indians. So Cleveland yeah, that's Indians. that's just how we, you say it. That's what I say. I mean, it's okay, whatever, but, but, you know, they, they have contact hitters. If you see the stats of these players, they are in, I think, second place in the whole league. They don't strike out. It was hard to strike them out. Look at look at Gary Cole. Yeah, they're not they're not a strikeout team. No, they're not. And so, they had improved with Josh Bell, and he don't strike out either too much. Well, it's very interesting to see our predictions. Let's see if they pan out. Um, we're gonna switch real quick here. Uh, we don't want to do too long of an episode here, but we want to make sure we cover everything. Real quick, running through the NBA standings, I'm looking at the Eastern Conference right now. Celtics still in first, 76ers two. Uh, Celtics Sixers are two and a half back. However, Nets and Bucks switched. Nets yeah. are now five games out of first, and the Bucks are now tied with the 76ers four games back. Um, Cleveland still sits five. Miami, six. Yeah, Miami looks like they jumped up a spot, I believe, um, from last week. You do have the Knicks sneaking in there at seven. Hawks are back at eight. Um, but, I mean, every team is one or two games out of, out of contention here. The only two that are really far back that might not make it in contention right now, it does look like it might be the Pistons and Hornets. Yeah. Uh, Magic might be falling into that category here soon if they don't get themselves out of the hole exactly. that they're digging. Um, Toronto. I'm big surprised about Toronto. Toronto fell, and they fell hard. And you know what it started with? That West Coast trip. Once they started that West Coast trip, that was... Van Vliet is going to be trade. Van Vliet, he don't want to... In the off season, Re-sign. I think. No, he's. They said rumors. Clippers, they want to do a trade for because Kawhi yeah, Leonard wants Von Vliet. Bon, bon they wants a point guard. They he they could, but the question is, are those guys actually going to touch the floor? Because we just seen here in Cleveland the other day, neither one of him or or George, Paul George played. So, um, rounding out the West real quick, we do have the Nuggets still one, uh, Grizzlies now two. Two games back now are the Grizzlies. Um, <laughs> so there's the Nuggets might be pulling a couple games ahead of them here soon 
John Morant can't do everything, so they need to find help. Um, Kings still sit at three. Boy, do they look good. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, Clippers are at four. Timberwolves, five. Warriors jump up to or jump wow, up to dude, six. But you see this? You see the six, seven, eight, and nine. It is a one. It, they're tied. <laughs> There's a four-way tie actually. Phoenix is back in the category now at nine. There's they're all tied. Uh, six or eight and a half games back. This is probably the most competitive this league has ever been in yeah. a long time. Again, same thing with the East. You have about two teams that are pretty much out of contention. Maybe three if they can't get it together. Rockets, Spurs, um, Lakers are down there. Um, we really aren't going to get into it, but uh, terrible officiating. Oh my god, that was uh, horrible for the NBA Boston Lakers game. We watched that one. Uh, but it was that was a, a foul. It was not a foul. I did call a foul for the Brown. I think it was. Uh, but they didn't call it for LeBron. Well, it, it, it was not a foul for the Brown, but they, they didn't call a foul for. It was LeBron. on. It was on Tatum. Tatum was the one who fouled them. Yeah, but, Tatum, and it was bad. It, it, and all the excuses every single time, the the, the referees uh, association they t they tweet. They said they some of these uh, officials they are going sleepless at night. Okay, so, but made made adjustments. You you got made to. adjustments, and, that, and, and that's and, in and every the thing, sport. And then and they and they pissed me off that the players can able to argue or or can able to express themselves before the NBA. Find them. And that's another issue that you got to look into. The reason why we have that argument all the time about if the MOB brings automatic umpiring in, you can't argue a call. And But you think it's right when the player uh, have a, you know, have a reason to argue? No, I and, agree. And the NBA comes with the fine? And the same thing with the NFL. Do you think they fine uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron James and... And Dennis Schroeder, because depending they on all of them. depending on how they no, depending they did. on how did they okay, they Anthony Davis is ridiculous. We got cheat. That's what he Anthony Davis said. Yeah, again they did get cheated out of that one. Um, and the official said, "Well, we made mistakes." So how many times you guys made mistakes? I think it's time for the NBA find the official sometimes something like that clear, and you can able. Careful, call. careful. You might get fined here in a minute talking about oh open God. open oh, criticism on the me, officials. Yeah, yeah. Open criticism on the officials. But I'm serious. No, no. It, it doesn't, it don't, you look, at, look at yesterday's... Uh, um, we can jump in the NFL soon. But there was a bad officiating by the NFL as That's well. actually what I was kind of leading into, the NFL officiating. Um, we made our predictions. Um, we got half of them right. We got the Eagles right. Um, unfortunately, that was just a game that was oh, automatically out of there. If if the 49ers got screwed uh, oh, with Brock God. Purdy getting hurt, and then I mean they just they every single quarterback that stepped on that field got hurt for them. You can't take the what Brock Purdy just did though for them. Uh, there's gonna be a big argument. Um, I know it's a UCL injury, so we'll see if he um we'll see if he um can actually come back from that, but um. It's going to be interesting. Bengals, Chiefs. Um, again, we're Browns fans, so we're not biased for the Bengals. That's obviously a division opponent. We're not going to be biased for the Chiefs. We got screwed officiating with the helmet-to-helmet -helmet call. That was clear helmet-to-helmet. -helmet. But, yeah, at, at the end of the day, um, bad officiating overall all game long. Uh, the one There are some questionables. Like I did see a, a couple videos of. Burrow threw the ball, and he counted like one, two, yeah. two and a half. He got hit late. Wasn't called. Um, the only call that I can say they got 100% right was the late hit out of bounds on Mahomes, which helped yeah. the Chiefs. 50 because, yards, yeah. Yep, that would have been a 60-yarder instead of a 45, which but maybe, what about maybe that we see over time. Mahomes, Mahomes uh, he throw something. He threw it. It, it so it looks exact. If you actually slow down both videos and where the ball landed for the Bengals, where Burrow threw it, okay, and where the receiver was, which was P Ryan, um, Samaji P Ryan was in the area. They're about three yards away from where the ball hit and where P Ryan was. It looks almost the exact same distance, maybe a yard closer, if that. For it looks like maybe Kelsey when Mahomes did that. So, you got to actually pause where the ball hit versus where the receiver is or the, the retended receiver mm -hmm. and see. Um, but then the other thing was that scramble that Mahomes did before the penalty and the late hit. If you watch that video in slow motion and in normal speed, 
if you have good enough eyes to see at a normal speed like I usually do and like you usually do, two miss holding calls on top of a missed block in the back yeah. on the punt prior to that with 45 seconds left. 45 seconds left on the clock, they punted to the Chiefs. And Sky Moore ran it from around this 15, 20-yard line all the way to almost the 50 when it should have been a block in the back and it should have been 15 yards at the end of the run, which at that point, Bengals even if you do get uh, – the Bengals have a chance to send it to overtime. And with the overtime rules in the postseason, both teams get a shot. Yeah. The Bengals did hurt themselves, though. I don't know what that player was thinking. I think it was yeah, Jonathan Osweiler. Was Os- 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 um He's a rookie or not? I don't know if he's a rookie or he not. He was crying. I I saw it. He was well. You can't emotional. have bold, you can't have dumb plays like that either. I mean, he was clearly out of bounds. I could see if like, you know, he's like on the verge of going out of bounds or like one or it's like. But just he stop. was he was already almost past the out yeah, of bounds just, marker onto the bench. Just stop. You know, like don't. I I don't know. I don't know. It was just it, it's crazy. But but I think the officials there was some bad officiating about that game. Yeah. I wish we would have had better games. Chiefs and Bengals were all right um, up until the officiating was, it was the a bad good game. part. It was a good game. It was. Um, but, again, this isn't – I'm not – like I said, we're not making an excuse for the Bengals. We're not saying that the Chiefs were handed the game. The Bengals did have 10 offensive possessions. Mm-hmm. They scored two touchdowns, two field goals. Yeah. You got to be better than that. Yeah. You got to be better than that. They barely got out of their own side of the field half those possessions as well. So, um, was, so who was your prediction for Super Bowl? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with the Eagles. I think the Eagles. Me too. By the way, Kelsey versus Kelsey. We're getting the Kelsey brothers <laughs> against each other. Now they won't be on the field at the same time, unfortunately. Um, but it will be fun to watch. But they're both on offense. They're both gonna be talking crap to the other from fly the Eagles fly. That's what you're going with. All right. <laughs> So we'll find out in two weeks. Um, but other than that, um, we covered everything we needed to today. Um, good episode, I think. Yeah. We'll wait and see what uh, what happens. But next week, um, it's going to be a Super Bowl edition. Might not be as long as this one, but we're going to do position breakdowns, who we think is uh, going to win certain categories, what we think uh, the score might be. But uh, but uh, we will... Uh, We'll talk about that next week, possibly. Of course. But it's going to be a Super Bowl edition next week, so make sure you tune into that one. And as always, make sure you follow Inside the Stadium podcast on Twitter at Inside Stadium. Uh, Link is in the bio on YouTube for that. You can find uh, the link on our Twitter page. And then also our personal Twitter pages. You have at Shea Ruiz, C-H-E-Y-R-U-I-Z, 23. Um, And then you can find me at Shatera Cameron, which is at S-H-U-T-T-E-R-A. Uh, C-A-M-E-R-O-N Those are our personal ones If we want any more breakdowns on there You'll see it on there But make sure you follow us on YouTube and Twitter Subscribe as well Um, Second episode in the books We look forward to seeing you guys next week Uh, You guys take care Have a good one